two. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Relentless Talk Radio. This is segment three of episode 59. I have Scott Marine on the line with me from Dynamic Appliance Repair. And I really appreciate you being patient with this whole process, Scott, because I'm in Vermont and it's the first time I've been on my dad's computer. So it's been a, it's been a bit of a, a mad dash to get you get you going today. So tell everybody who you are and what it is that you do. Well, I am Scott Marine, and our company is Dynamic Appliance Repair. We do in-home appliance repair. Uh, our office is located in Carefree, Arizona. Uh, we service Carefree, Care, Cave Creek, and uh, surrounding communities. Um, we are a new business in town, not new to the industry, but certainly new to this label. Uh, we've got some uh, outstanding technicians that got together to create a better product, a better brand, and a better label, and I'm here today to tell you about it. Well, it's super cool. I love how we met. Kathy and I used to work at a similar company um, at different times, and we became Facebook friends, and I saw that she got a new job and congratulated her, and she inboxed me and said, uh, we'd love to come on Relentless Talk Radio. So I love it when it works out that way. Um, some a, a weird coincidental meeting that that and I I have to tell you, one of the things um, everybody who knows me knows I'm like a turbo networker. And one of the things that people ask me for the most is appliance repair. I was so excited when I read what she was doing because I was like, wow, I finally have somebody that I can send them to. So thank you for opening your business because it's really super needed. And I know you're going to make just a crap ton of money because people really need what you do. And there's not a lot of people who do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't have an appliance in their house? Who doesn't have multiple appliances in their houses? Oh, absolutely. And they don't make things like they used to either. So there's constantly a need for that kind of repair. And, you know, sometimes people have things for a very long time and they just all of a sudden, you know, something happens and it needs to get fixed. So, so why do you do what you do? I mean, you've been doing it for a long time, right? I have been doing it for a long time. I, I love to work with my hands and I love the, the satisfaction of completing a project and walking away from something, accomplishing something, walking out the door, a happy customer. She's got that pie in the oven now and she's going to be okay for her book club. Um, you know, the, the garage refrigerator is back up and running. So the beer is cold. Uh, meeting different people every day, uh, meeting different scenarios. You know, if you, uh, on our website, we have a, a dynamic pet of the day. So a lot of our customers, the bulk of our customers have pets at home. And those pets are often interacting with our technicians. So we've taken pictures of the pets interacting with technicians and put them up on our, on our website. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Customers love it. You know, everybody loves their dogs. Uh, so we tell them that we're going to uh, feature their dog on our website. And uh, they get a big kick out of that. And uh, it's, it's a real good thing. You know, I love what you said there. I, a, a couple of years ago, I stopped telling people what I do and I started to tell them the reason why I do it. You know, it, you, you don't fix ovens. You make pies possible. I, 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 I fix households. I fix households. <laughs> uh, I do. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I go into a household and I'm working on uh, appliance A, but I can see over my shoulder an issue with appliance B. So I start to converse with them and talk with them and tell them about, I got maintenance tips and uh, ideas to preserve the, the life of your machine. Uh, I go to continuing education classes regularly. I go to some of the large uh, appliance conventions. Uh, and every time I walk away from one of those conventions, I've got just, it just feels like my head is just swimming with information that I need to get out to my customers and, uh, uh, I, I love what I do every every single day. I love what I do. It doesn't feel like work when you love what you do. I go out on a daily basis. I meet people. I problem solve. I fix some things and I move on to the next one and I start it all over again the next day. Um, I just yeah. love it. I love yeah. it. So, what do you think the big so far? You, you're you're relative. You're not new to the industry, but you're new in business. What's the biggest thing you've learned so far? Phew wee. <laughs> I, I what I learned so far. Number one is you got to have professionals doing the job that a professional should do. Uh, my office staff is, is top notch. Uh, Kathy is my director of operations. She is phenomenal. She Amazing. Inside and out. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if it weren't for Kathy and if it weren't for her abilities and her knowledge in this industry. She's a dynamo. Um, 
<laughs> and she's a sweet girl on top of it. She's not yeah. just a smarty. She's super sweet. Exactly. And her husband is my master technician. Uh, Steve's got over 30 years in the industry. Uh, Steve's about my age. So this is all that Steve's ever done for the most part in his life. And he is so efficient. Uh, customers love him. They refer him. They request him on a regular basis. Um, it's it, We've started off with a, a small team, but the small team is the very best team uh, to get this whole thing started. Well, it sounds to me like you've learned something super important that takes people a lot, a long time to learn. One, I mean, to really learn. It's one thing to say it, but to really know it is one, hire good people. And it's better to be small and mighty than to be big and clunky. Absolutely. However, we're small and mighty for the moment, but we're going to be mighty, mighty big and mighty, mighty powerful in no time at all. A hundred percent. I love that. I love that. Yeah. You know, so one of the things we were talking about um, today was the relentless topic, which is life is in session. And and you told me pre-broadcast what, your, what yours was. And, you know, I have to tell you, um, I gave you the option not to talk about it. Um, we're, we, we've both been through some really heavy stuff. So, you know, right now my dad is in hospice, up, literally upstairs right above me. Um, and I'm losing my dad. But my, when we were, um, when I was 16 and my brother was 22, um, we lost my brother. So we have that in common. And yeah. I think that experience um, is really what has led me to um, have my entire life be focused around lifting up and encouraging others to do their best because of that one early experience in my life. So yeah. what what's your what's your words of wisdom that you have over how life is always in session? Well, life is, in fact, always in session, uh, like it or not, that uh, even if the alarm clock doesn't go off, you got to get up in the morning regardless. Uh, yeah, for me and life being in session, uh, as we discussed previously, uh, well, let me back up a little bit from what we discussed previously. Uh, so I got married four days after my 18th birthday. Wow. Uh, and my wife uh, at the time, uh, she uh, was diagnosed with leukemia back in uh, 1997 and she passed from complications from a bone marrow transplant so at that point my son was 11 years old so my 11 year old son and i uh did our thing we had an unbelievable relationship uh i was mother and father to this to, to this young boy and uh i tell you we, we, one example I was in the grocery store with my son and he, we were in line, the, the, the girl was checking us out at the store, and uh, he said, uh, Dad, I love you. And, the, and the, the, the checker stopped everything. She said, a 12-year-old boy out loud saying, I love you to, her, to his father in the store, she says, you don't see that every day. I said, because we have a relationship that not everybody has um, because of, of the situation with his mom dying. So as he got a little bit older, I brought him, I, I was uh, an electrician at the time, commercial electrician, I traveled a lot. Uh, the company I was with allowed me to bring him on as my apprentice. He sat shotgun in my truck. We would be on the road sometimes for two and three months at a time, traveling the country, doing electrical work for big box stores, and we loved it. And every time we rolled into a town on a new project, the old men on the job would say, how in the world do you work with your kid every day, hotel every night? Just it's relentless. And the young kids would say the same thing to him. How on earth, how on earth do you work with your dad every day? So we had the most beautiful relationship. It was wonderful. Uh, people envied our relationship. And in 2013, I was working at a customer's house repairing a refrigerator when I got the phone call. The phone call said, Scott, we can't find your son. We need to talk to him. So I hopped on my laptop right away. I looked up accidents on I-40 and there was his truck. Looked like it blew up. Uh, ladders everywhere, trucks everywhere, and I can see my son's dead body next to the truck oh. that very day. That's how I found out that my son passed. Um, but even that day, I had service calls to do. I, I ended up doing a few service calls. I just felt it was best for me to be out there and just that for that distraction because life was in session. I had customers that needed things done. Certainly, I could have taken off. It was a tragic event. But for me, it was better to stick with what I was doing, keep going with my day. At the end of the day, those few calls that got out of the way, 
Then I was able to focus on what was going on. And the next day, right back to be life being in session. Uh, those things, uh, those deaths in my past have made me the person I am today. I deal with things uh, a lot better today. Uh, tragedies. Uh, my relationship with my wife is, is unbelievable. We've got the most wonderful relationship. I remarried uh, only eight years ago. And one thing that was awesome about that whole thing, too, is my son, when he met my wife, my current wife, he called her mother. He loved her to death. He would call her out of the blue in the middle of the day just to say hi and to say that he was thinking about her. So my current wife has never had a child. My son was a rather large young man. And so my wife would brag to all of her girlfriends that uh, in this relation, this new relationship, she just had a 300 pound baby boy that she loved. And those two, they, they, it, it, was, it was awesome to see that whole thing happen. And he was your only child. He was my only child. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Scott, I, <laughs> I'm speechless, man. I tell you what. I, you know, I mean, it's amazing to me how it's amazing to me that I I I didn't know I this story when I chose the topic. I you said a little bit of it before I know the whole story. And I almost didn't do today's show because my dad is is really not well upstairs right now. He's having a very hard day. You know, they don't tell you that um that my dad has lymphoma. And um, they don't tell you at the end of life that you have some of the complications that you have. I, I won't tell too much of my dad's story out of respect for him right now, but sure. you know, you can, when you, when you really stand up for the person that you are, you move forward anyway. And you do that because you have a wife and daughter and I have a father and a brother that would expect nothing less of us. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then by showing up for life, it somehow, I think, you know, I, I'm not even sure what the words are. By showing up for your life, it somehow makes the loss more tolerable because you still showed up, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, all these little tragedies in our lives, all these hurdles and obstacles that we wrestle with, and or at least for myself, um, let's just make me a stronger, better person for tomorrow. Um, I, I wouldn't change my past uh, for anything because if I changed my past, uh, it would change who I am today. And and that's why when you go into somebody's home, you'll notice the appliance that's not working and the cat that's sitting on it. And you take pictures and post it on your website because for you, family and the, the real meaning to what all those things are is very real and very true and very, very concrete for you. Absolutely. You, You've taken these things in your life that have made you a stronger person, but some people would just crawl under a rock and just not come out. They wouldn't be starting a business and carefree. Yeah, yeah, carefree, <laughs> carefree is not the number one uh, destination to start a business, in, uh, especially in this line of work. Uh, we're very isolated up here, uh, up very far north, I should say, at least. Um, it's not in the central Phoenix, Scottsdale area, but I love this area. It's beautiful up here. There's so many awesome people. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce in this area is, is a, a close-knit bunch of people who are very supportive. Uh, I'm new to the Chamber, um, but boy, I'm recognizing quickly the benefits and uh, the, the importance of having a, a, an active Chamber in your community. Well, you know, and we and we were going to stop on that. There's actually a chamber mixer that's coming up here tomorrow morning, right? Uh, that's tomorrow night. The the big uh, mixer at the Savannah uh, Spa and Resort. Uh, so yeah, yeah, looking really looking forward to to get up there. And uh, again, it's it's all networking and and uh, getting together with our uh, people in the community uh, and promoting myself as well. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm there to promote 100%. myself. That's why community. you do those things. That's why we're talking today, right? Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the reasons why I ask these kind of heartfelt questions is because I want your customers to know that the quality of human being that they're hiring when they invite somebody into their laundry room to fix their dryer. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It, super important for what you do because you're going to be in somebody's home, you know, and, and that's a huge responsibility. 
Yeah, and not only my, uh, not only are are we at a dynamic appliance repair uh, involved with the Chamber of Commerce, but additionally uh, we're involved with our local nonprofits, uh, the Foothills Library, the Cave Cape Creek Museum, um, the Kiwanis Club, uh, and the uh, yeah, no, the, the Foothills Food Bank, Foothills Food right. Bank. Uh, and you know, I I had a business in Carefree for a while too, so I'm familiar with all of those great organizations. I love Carefree and Cave Creek and the business community up there. The the, the business owners that are in Cave Carefree and Cave Creek remind me a lot of the Vermonters that I grew up with because they're very resilient because it's a small community. But I think that what you're doing, Scott, is really important for that community because there's a lot of older people up there and families up there that need to make the most of their appliances as opposed to going out and buying another appliance. I mean, Absolutely. it's, it's I, and I see it every day. So uh, in, in today's modern age, appliances have become high, efi high efficiency appliances, uh, most notable with dishwashers and washing machines. I can't tell you how often I go into a customer's home and I can see so many things they're doing that are destroying or, or degrading their appliances at a rapid rate uh, because appliances today need to be cared for differently than appliances of yesteryear. That's uh, so. Another thing I'm going to be doing, because we want to be so community involved and community oriented, uh, March 25th, I believe it is, we have, I have my first presentation at the Foothills Library, and that presentation is on getting the most of your high efficiency appliances. So I can review these items with the customers, and I can help these people to, to get more longevity out of their appliances. Uh, Education and knowledge is, goes a long way in the appliance industry. And there's so many things that I can, I can share with and give to my community that, that really helps them in the long run. It's to help them save money. It'll help them to be more efficient uh, in their home. Uh, almost everybody I've run into uses too much laundry soap. I have a nice little five minute speech I do about laundry soap and people call in just to have me review with them the laundry so discussions that I have. So yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, and I love it. I love it. I hang when, on every word when I'm talking about these things too. It's, it's, it's pretty neat. Well, this is what happens when you, when you hire a small business owner who has a passion for doing what he does because it's connected to his humanity. You're going to get somebody who notices how much laundry soap you put in your, in your, in your washer. Now, if you were just to go out and hire handyman corporation 500 guys you're going to get some guy named phil who is just an, a ten dollar fifteen dollar an hour employee which is i mean i say just it's a wrong word but he's not right. the owner of the company he he's doesn't have the passion that you have. Yeah. So i love hiring smaller mom and pop shops like you to to fix those types of things because it's going to get done right it's like it's because it's a family-owned thing and uh I think it's pretty cool that you are so passionate about what you do and that you've, that you've created a, a business around your passion. That's super cool. Absolutely. You know, the name dynamic appliance repair did not come uh, accidentally. Uh, I've been told on more than one occasion, I'm pretty dynamic uh, uh, personality. Um, I, I'm very uh, talkative, uh, very animated. Uh, I just and, can't yeah. wait to meet you in person. And I, of course, you know, I, I, I could smack myself on the forehead because I, I called you reliable, reliable appliance pair in the first <laughs> segment. Like, shoot. Because I, I had my notes, but I brought my computer upstairs. I left it on my I left it on my bed. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So, you know, we just wing it when we haven't got our nose. I, you know, I, I hit menopause. And the one thing that happened to me is my impromptu speaking thing just went poof. So I have to have notes and everything. It's funny. Yeah. I didn't get any of the bad stuff, but I got that. Yeah. And, and you know, dynamic appliance repair, uh, another thing, getting back to the whole community thing, because yeah. we are so involved with our community, when my technicians and myself go out to a customer's home, we're giving them the most honest, straightforward assessment and diagnosis of their appliance that we possibly can because we are involved with those customers. They are in our communities. We're going to oh, run yeah. into those customers when I'm at, when we're volunteering at the Thunderbird Art and Wine Festival. I'm going to run into those One customers my faves. when I'm doing a presentation at the library. I'm going to run into those customers when my I'm eating dinner down at Harold's or at Brian's Barbecue. So 100%. when you call a national uh, number, and they dispatch a technician from a call center. He's not involved yep. in your community. He doesn't care about your community. He's in there to get his money and to get. 
Yeah. I am in there to build a relationship and to assure you that you've got somebody in your community that's there ready to help you on that Friday afternoon when the refrigerator goes down, we're just a phone call away. You know, Scott, when you went to my dad's bike shop in Rutland, Vermont, and it's funny because, you know, I've been posting some things about my dad, you know, not being well. And some folks have told me about how they got their bicycles for their entire family from my dad. So if that family, that family would come in for, you know, the first boy and then the next boy and the girl, right. And the, and right. the bike would rotate. Right. So the first one was always getting the new bike and the next one was always getting the next one. So my father always made sure that each bike was fixed well and clean and like new because he knew they were being recycled for the next ones. Right. Absolutely. And if you asked him, you know, where, where should I get something to eat while you're fixing my bike? He'd bring you out to the parking lot and he'd point up to Gill's and he'd say, get yourself a Gill and ask for Frank special. Yeah. You know, you have a grinder and ask for Frank special, you know, because that, that, because he was really thinking about the fact that he was, he was, creating something for a little kid that was so important. And, uh, and that's not, I don't know, today we call that networking, but back then it was just called being part of a community. You know what I mean? It was just doing the right thing. I mean, it's just, just doing the right thing. And so I love, I, I think that where you, where you decided to open up is perfect. There's a lot of houses in that area. It's a big population. It's a oh, yeah. perfect location oh. for you. Yeah. And I really appreciate the topic that we chose today because it really, speaks to the who you are as a human being and and why your attention to detail is just so stellar it's because whenever i've met someone who's had a substantial loss in their life they look at the details in a very different way <laughs> absolutely uh yeah that'll it'll get you thinking uh it'll get you rethinking a lot of things in your life uh things i used to think were really important uh after uh, the death of a wife and a child you know, sometimes you realize those things aren't important and the things that you thought weren't important are important. Um, and just like with your dad, with the bikes and the, the different people within that family growing up and get a new bike. When I come into a customer's home, I know they have more than one appliance. My first call, I'm in there for their dishwasher, but I know they have a washer, they have a dryer, they have a refrigerator, they have all kinds of appliances. And then they have neighbors and friends. So I, from that very first moment, when I walk through the door, it's, it's, it's showtime, essentially. Absolutely. You're taking you know, care of it. I put on that smile. I start conversing. Tips, tricks, pointers. Because uh, you know problems. the more you give away, the more you're going to get back. Absolutely. So how do people get a hold of you? How do they hire you? Well, uh, the best way to get a hold of us is to call us directly. Um, we're 480-590-7322. But we're also Dynamic Appliance Repair AZ.com. Uh, and then our Facebook feed. Uh, so uh, back again to Kathy, Director of Operations. Phenomenal yeah. job on Facebook. She's if you amazing. Want to take a look at, 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 a, at a really well put together Facebook feed, somebody who posts regularly, has wit, has smarts, check out our Facebook feed. Yeah, that's Definitely awesome. worth looking at. Um, totally awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, Scott, I appreciate you hanging in there with me while I'm in Vermont on a weird computer and just, you know, doing the best I can to, to stay the course as my father taught me. So thank you very much. And I have to say that um, thank you very, very much for sharing your story. You could have shared anything else. And it's, it's a pretty huge story. And uh, I, I really appreciate you. I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. Thank you very much for taking time out today because time is the most important thing that you can give anybody. So I look forward to meeting you in person. Absolutely. Give me a call when you're in town. We'll show you around. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna have you take a look at our dryer. We have a squeak. Drives me ah, crazy. I'll, I'll get that taken care of. We you. get a squeaky dryer. Call <laughs> Scott and ask for the relentless special, and he will give you take extra special care of you if you have a squeaky dryer or you have a stove that's not one of the burners isn't running right or you got a, an AC that's. Do you do, do, you do ACs? Uh, no, we don't do air conditioning, but we also are just introducing a service plan. $199 annually, get your uh, a refrigerator service annually, and also get you a free service call every year. Phenomenal value. Check out our website, it. get all the details. Awesome. Well, we will see you soon. We'll have breakfast at Harold's. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Take care, Scott. Thank you, Michelle. Have a great day. 
All right, everybody. So there's episode 59 um, from the first one here from Vermont. I'm not sure how long I'll be here in Vermont, but I just really appreciated what both Samantha and Scott had to say. And um, I have to say today has been a very um, taxing day. And the two of them gave me a lot of good gas to go into the rest of the night with my dad. So um, I will be here again next Tuesday at 2.30 with two more dynamic people to talk to now, and reliable and dynamic. That's so funny, but Hey everybody have a great day. And, uh, this is relentless talk radio episode 59 signing out. Take care. <laughs>